Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back to GBC land. Uh, this is Zach and... And Victor B, your one and only. Yeah. <laughs> um, we have a lot of stuff to talk about. And, yes. Uh, very eager um, to talk to Nolan. Although, I'm afraid it might get us to spend more money because he seems to know what he's talking about. Seems to really get us into uh, products and a little bit more. And yes. that was something I didn't think I would happen to me when I got into cycling. And I'll explain a little bit. But, um, but yeah, it's definitely it's, his videos have definitely helped. And uh, I, I love his perspective. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I've never had any problem like wanting more gear. <laughs> <laughs> but it's always good to uh, get a different uh, opinion on things and look at it in a more unbiased way. And I think that's what he does a really good job of doing. Okay. Well, uh, let's, let's bring him into the, welcome to the jungle. So let's bring Nolan in and Yo. Right. <laughs> welcome. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Um, I didn't realize I, I influenced you in any way. Didn't mean to. It was unintentional. <laughs> you did. You did. <laughs> yeah. Well, he I didn't mean, tell me that though. I didn't know that was why he got those wheels. Mm, oh, yeah. can I spoil it? Spoiler sure. alert. Okay. We'll go. Yeah. Go ahead. Tell. Him. Well, let me be clear. I um I don't consider myself <laughs> the the I word. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> yeah. That's that's not the goal of the channel, but. Uh, you know, if there's a product or two that comes along that that I find interesting or that I, you know, use myself, it's usually worth putting a video out there to at least, you know, offer my point of view on it. No, I, I definitely think that, you know, it comes very cleanly across in your, your videos. You're just really into it and you just want to talk bikes and you just happen to have a camera in front of you. So, um, come so on, really that can't be the only reason I'm not buying it. <laughs> well, I mean, I, look, I mean, like, we all love being part of this community, too. And, you know, we know whenever we put this stuff out that people will have opinions, get feedback. Mm -hmm. And um, so I know we're throwing ourselves a little bit more into the fire. But, you know, me acting dumb seems to help, like, well, <laughs> a lot of activity on that front. So, you, you'll you know, have to excuse me. When did you um, when did you start GBC, the channel, YouTube channel? Uh, well, technically, even though it's a little bit older, we're saying GBC is celebrating our five year anniversary in five. June. Cool. But I don't know if I started making, got into the video game until maybe if probably the year after. Right. You had the website first. Started as a website. That's right. That's right. There's yeah. a lot of good. I, I learned a lot. I think probably before you had the channel, I would go on. To the site to see if there's anything that i you know that's local to to me and that i could that, that i can handle there wasn't a lot because i'm pretty wimpy when it comes to big rides but um some of the routes uh you know i pieced together shorter routes based on your routes it was a really helpful resource yeah that's that's why i started it i was hoping to find other people and um you know people showing off awesome rides and that didn't happen. <laughs> uh, at least for probably, yeah, for about the good good first year and a half. And so that's why, like, the June date is kind of like the first date because, you know, somebody said, hey, I just saw the pictures you put because I have an, uh, another website, Secret Valley, which is more advocacy oriented. And why don't you hold a ride? So I was like, okay. And I was like, well, I'll throw it out to these 60 strangers on our Facebook group. And a handful of them showed up and that kind of like helped birth it. And then, you know, people saw that and it kind of took off organically from there. So, so, so just to be clear on the Cicla Valley YouTube channel, there was never any gravel coverage. Cause I know we did a bunch of videos on there, but I don't recall doing gravel. There may be, oh boy, whoever wants to flip over to a different channel right now, please. <laughs> um, <laughs> Because that precedes GBC. Yeah, I mean, like I did stuff like I raced my wife from from UCLA to our house. She was driving, I was biking. Um, ha had a few other things, but I, yeah, I, I 
you know, like, I, and, and I think that's part of the thing in, you know, you making videos is like, we all kind of like find our own speed of how we make videos. And I, you know, I bet you 99% of the people out there who are biking have cameras, but probably only about 1% use them because it's really hard to like actually put this all together. Well, you have to have a certain drive to there's something in like video creators that makes them want to make a video and put it out there. And, um, it's just, it's strange that I found myself making videos. So I never saw myself as like an extrovert or, you know, like having really anything interesting to say. Um, but when, when COVID hit, when 2020 happened and, you know, I teach for a living, right? So I'm, I've got, I've grown accustomed to having an audience air quotes. Right. And so when that was kind of taken away, man, I started, I, I went crazy. I was like, I need mm. someone to listen to me right now. <laughs> 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 um, you know, uh, little kids at home, they don't, they don't give me that, um, all the time. So really like, you know, my channel was, uh, it was a COVID project that kind of, it grew legs over time. And the first, you know, obviously every creator, the first few videos are just terrible. They're just, well, I guess I can't speak for everyone, but my first several videos were just awful. Um, I keep them up there as a reminder of kind of, I'm not saying they're great now, but it's kind of a nice reminder to see like, oh, some progress has been made in the past four years. The progression um, is, is easy to see. Yeah, so, yeah. How did you come up with bike sauce? What was the inspiration for that? I have no idea. Is is one of those shower thoughts? Like I was trying to <laughs> come up with the name, and um, I think um, bike soup is what I originally <laughs> wanted. I don't know why. Good job going with sauce. Yeah, <laughs> and actually, it was already taken, so I had, I had to really. Pivot. I had to pivot, and I went with the sauce. <laughs> bike soup is taken. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Is it maybe another? It's probably a some type of cycling channel. I'm not actually sure, but I saw that it was taken, so wow. I had to pivot a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> I think they saved you. That that was a good a good pivot. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I like bike sauce. I like hot sauce and everything. So that's go. what it reminds me of. Yeah, yeah. People ask what it means, and it I don't I have no idea what bike sauce means. Just make it. something up at this point, <laughs> so it just becomes lore. Yeah, yeah you have to kind of say. I can't tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> people will love the intrigue and then they'll start a whole thread somewhere. Yeah, conspiracy <laughs> theories will abound. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wanted something with the word bike in it, but I didn't want to pigeonhole myself into it like a niche, like a niche. Um, you know, like 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 the videos we we've, we've put out like over 150 videos at this point. And they're just, there's no theme to the channel. Like there's no brand really, you know, we've done like mountain bike stuff, road bike stuff, gravel bike stuff, vintage builds, how to's and reviews. There's just, there's just no theme. And I, and I kind of knew it was going to be that way going in. Cause that's how I ride bikes. I ride whatever is like popular with my friends at the time. So we ride road and gravel and mountain um, some some couple of buddies bought BMX bikes. You know, I don't care to injure myself, so I didn't get in on that. But I knew it was going to be like a mishmash of like topics. So I think maybe that's where the sauce came in, right? Sauce, you just throw a bunch of ingredients in and you you see what you get. <laughs> well, as a, as a guy that has all those kind of bikes too, vintage, new, blah, blah, blah. I, I discovered your channel. The, the first video I saw was you dying gum hoods because i have vintage bikes with, with gum hoods there you go and then from there i saw your uh your kuat rack video which was interesting because i also have a kuat rack i'm like hey this guy's kind of like me a little bit sure so then i searched out your torque wrench thing because uh -huh. i don't trust those either <laughs> and that was very interesting okay so so good job i, I like the the diversity i guess yeah. for lack of a better word of the, the channel that's kind of cool that's a nicer way to put it. Um, yeah. I, I refer to it as just being all over the place. No, no, it's cool because, you know, not everybody's, like you said, just one thing. So you can, you know, spread the love. Sure, sure. Yeah. Well, you know, we do have some some tech questions. If anyone also else on the thread that's watching wants to throw in a question in the comment box, 
um, we'll take a look at them. But uh, yeah, I like you know I discovered you when I was uh, trying to find solutions for my cheap solutions for my Niner because you know for years Vic had been trying to get me to go tubeless, but I just didn't want years. years. I just didn't want to commit to you know one tire because like I'm already don't have the means to keep flipping it over. And so when you were talking about the hunt wheel set, I was like, okay, I will probably buy two. And, you know, they have been fantastic on, on my Niner, um, a great value. And, uh, you know, I had one problem a couple of years ago or, or near the end of the warranty, but they were super cool and sent me a, a new wheel. So, oh, which um which wheel specifically the I think 35 it was a the all road the was four seasons uh oh yeah um and, and that that's the one that that i ride more because i use the other one wasn't is, isn't an all road but it's a it's a skinnier one i keep 32s on it mm. and uh but you know it's just very easy to interchange the the two wheel sets yeah uh, um, not having to make any gear adjustments, um, except when I switched rotors on one of them. That was the big, uh, w where they don't exactly meet up. Yeah, but, yeah. Oh, you know what? Um, <clears throat> you gotta get, uh, you gotta get these. So these are, um, incredibly thin shims. Uh -huh. I forgot the exact thickness. But you can shim out your rotors. When so, if you have multiple wheel sets, you every time you slot it in, the rotors exactly perfectly lined up with your caliper. You don't have to readjust the brakes. I have a better one like that. Same principle. Okay. Because you don't need two. It's just one. It's like a. It's like a little sandwich, but it does the exact same thing. Uh, Bursman. You mean the um, the like the the feeler gauges that go on either nope. side of the rotor? No, nope, no, nope. I'll show you. Okay. Be right back. <laughs> the well, show and tell. The we're show and we're tell. driving you because, like, I want to tell people this wasn't a setup because you were able to grab them right away. I like, just remembered that I they were on my bench because uh, I'm letting a buddy borrow some wheels right now. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. So it's this, and it does the same thing what you're saying, but this one just slots over the rotor. Ah, where's the hand? Uh huh. But it does the same thing. So you just put it on, slide it in between the brakes, and with the caliper loose, and then just tighten it, and it's it works at a hundred percent every time. I got you. It just spins. It just it's. I just did it on one of my road bikes because yeah. it was it was rubbing a little bit. Just loosen it, slot this on. It, I use it every time I, I change pads. Got it. Just to get it just perfect. Right. But it's the same principle as that. It's just it's just easier because it's one thing instead yeah, of pushing well, I, two things in. Well, I think I think I might, I think I might have mis uh, mis mis uh, explained it. Like, cause these actually go, th these are designed so that you don't have to adjust the caliper, right? So these actually go between the the hub, the free the hub, and the disc rotor. Oh, it, it'll okay. change oh. the the actual mounting location of the rotor on the hub. So I get it. Okay, that's yeah, a, that's a whole different thing. Yeah. So yeah, so yeah, this yeah, way yeah. you don't even have to adjust the caliper you don't have to loosen the bolts or anything um these have been a like to me a game changer because i got a couple of bikes where i'll swap wheels pretty frequently mm -hmm. and um even with the feeler gauge like for me putting those in still have to loosen the caliper still have to slide it over just to touch and make sure you get it just mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so i mean that's not that big a deal but this no. but these shims avoid you having to do even that much so for the oh, extra that. lazy person out there <laughs> no, that's really cool. I never, I didn't know that's what it was. I thought it did what this does. You slot them in, right? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Learn something new every day. There's your tech. There's your tech. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, actually, kind of like taking a step back. You know, when I, uh, I've been like a big numbers guy my whole life, but when I got into cycling, I was really wanting it to be more of a visceral experience, and. I, I knew I would start to learn along the way, but, you know, just try to slow down that involvement because I just wanted just to ride. But, um, you know, with your mechanical engineering background and, 
knowing these bikes, you know, ins and outs, like how, how does that, are, are those two separate worlds? Do they blend? Um, are you able to shut it off or um, like sometimes do you just get a bike and like not even like really look at, at the mechanics or the geometry and you just jump on and no. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I That's see, embedded. I, I, see where you're, I, I got your question. Um, it's an open one, open-ended one. Um, I Sometimes I'll get a review bike. And I'm like so tempted to not look at the geo charts and just do a ride purely based on feel. But I haven't done it yet. I just can't bring myself to not study the ge the geometry charts uh, beforehand, not, you know, log my tire pressures before and after every ride. It's, I, it's just, um, it's more of a problem, I would say. Then yeah, I wish I could just turn everything off and go for a ride. And sometimes I can like, um, like you probably know, Zach, like when you go out for a ride, you've got cameras all over the place. You're thinking about how you might create a video with this footage. You're quote unquote shooting for the edit and you potentially lose some of the experience, um, through that process. So, you know, once in a while I'll, you know, I'll go on a ride intentionally with no cameras, no power meters, no computer even. And um, I generally have more fun on those rides. So I, I know that the visceral side is like, you know, that's why we all started cycling in the first place is for that experience. And, um, you know, the power meters come along, the Garmin's come along, Strava came along, all those, all the data starts to work its way into the experience. And I think you're right. It, it takes something away from it. Um, it's replaced with something else like data and, you know, being able to measure your progress, you know, so that's good. But um, I, I don't know that you can have, but I, it's a zero sum game in my opinion. You can't really have all of both in the same ride. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know I've been trying to, I, I think over time I've been able to, uh, you know, take that element out a little bit more. And like I normally like, you know, we did Catalina. I think I normally stay in it, but um, the drone has been probably the biggest thing of taking away. And you know, I try and limit that. I try and get ahead. But yeah. I, one more time. Wait, just go. Just turn around and go again, guys. When I was going to use it, <laughs> did not have to join me. Didn't have to get on that ship. <laughs> um, I wouldn't miss it. I wouldn't miss it. The drone doesn't bother me. Yeah. Uh, you know, when we go on these rides and when we're filming, I understand that we're filming and I have a camera on my bike. So it's 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 a different experience. So yeah. it's not a bad experience. It's just a different experience. And, you know, you go into it knowing that um, I enjoy that. Um, but like you said, sometimes just getting rid of all that stuff and just like I have a single speed hardtail mountain bike. It's just basically like a, a big kid's bike. And yeah. that takes me back to just like riding BMX and stuff yeah. like that. Like that's like the purest bike I have. Right, right, right. No electronics, nothing, just one gear. You're always in the wrong gear. <laughs> and uh, it, it, it's just, it's just love. I just, people say, why do you have that bike? I'm like, I love that bike. Yeah. That is what got me into bikes, this type of bike. Right. Just a simple bicycle with one gear. Sure. Yeah. And that, that, that's the, you know, that's what it's all about. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I kind of got off. Like your your question was, I think more geared towards. Am I thinking in terms of like systems and mechanisms while I'm riding, not necessarily video cameras, which is like a whole separate thing. Are you doing science, like your cap says? No, uh, no, <laughs> not. Um, of course not. I, I the the most that I'll do is if I'm riding solo, um, slogging up a climb, I'll I'll pass the time by trying to work out like gear ratios in my head. Wow. Like if I, if I add two teeth to the, uh, you know, big cog, what does that do percentage wise to my gear ratio? Oh my God. Um, <laughs> but that's mostly just like to pass the time, you know, I'm not, that's just where my mind goes naturally is I can't, I can't help that. It's just, 
Uh, never told that to anybody, but that's, yes, yeah, thinking about just dumb stuff like that. Whereas most people will be looking off into the scenery and appreciating the nature that they're in. Um, like, here's a thought that I often have when you're riding along, staring at the front of your tire, like you're looking at the top of your front tire. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I think about how tread patterns are designed and, and how they would interact with the, the ground surface, right? The weird thing to me is that what you're looking at on the top of your tire is backwards from what is interacting with the ground because it's, <laughs> it's rotated 180, right? So right, right. sometimes I think when you got these like Chevron patterns that look very aggressive, they're kind of forward pointing like an arrow. Right. I'm wondering if that makes sense because on the bottom side of the tire, they're backwards or like the wrong way almost. I don't that see see that's where my head goes. <laughs> yeah, that's a good that's a good question, right? And so, but, but tires are rotation. I'm sure tire engineers have figured it out. Of course, yeah, of course <laughs> they've thought about it. But you know, the average consumer will look at a tire and say, "Oh, that looks that looks knobby. Those knobs are going to give me great grip." I don't know. How do you know? Like you got to like do the analysis, and you know, Richie tires have something called I. I hope I don't get this wrong. I think it's called vector force analysis. It's just uh, probably, it's just a marketing thing, right? But but I understand where it comes from because as you're cornering, right, forces are vectors and they're pushing back on your tire and, you know, equal and opposite forces. So depending on the angle of the knobs and 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 the particular acceleration while you're turning, like you want those knobs angled the right way so that you maximize your grip. Mm -hmm. So I bet that's part of the, you know, technology that went into those tires, but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's the kind of stuff I think about. <laughs> well, that, that's reasonable, but trying to figure out gear ratios while you're riding is, I don't know about that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It looks like someone else here had the same thing. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I'm the same way too. And I used to run, you know, I would calculate how many miles, like in ways to run, I, you know, Strava, <coughs> GPS devices didn't exist, but like I would look at my watch and I just would like calculate, okay, I'm running for two hours. I've done 42%, which means I have to do 133% more of what I've already done. And just like little number games uh, yeah. just to, <clears throat> you know, break, break, break it down along the way. Right. Yeah. Um, sure. Nerdy stuff, right? <laughs> we uh, Another question here um i'm sure this is for, for you no one what are your favorite 3d parts to use on your bike either for maintenance or function or <laughs> <the> ride <laughs> yeah 3d printing is so cool um the technology's come so far in the last five years two years right it just keeps advancing at such a crazy rate um i i don't have a 3d printed saddle yet uh, i would like to try one someday but they're four hundred dollars, and um, that's a lot of money for a saddle. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? And also, personally, I don't like the way they look. Mm. It kind of creeps me out. It's kind of like a web. <laughs> it's like they're they're creepy looking. The TBGVs to look at it. Yeah, I don't. I don't. <laughs> I, honestly, I don't like the way they look. I'm sure they feel great and everything, but yeah. besides the cost, I, if you gave me one, I would just flip it. Oh yeah. Yeah, I don't. I, I'm not a fan of how. That's just me. Aesthetically, it just doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, 3D printing metal is, to me, that's wild. And I think that's where a lot of the industry is heading. Titanium. You know, titanium lugs yeah. and stuff. Great. Printed titanium, printed yeah. steel. Yes. Um, you probably, I don't know if you follow the Instagram, but I've got a couple of new house frames that I'm going to, they're in, in the queue to be built up. And um, Daniel Yang, who's kind of like the, the mastermind over there, He's designed 3D printed uh, chainstay yoke as well as a seat stay yoke, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just like genius is what it is. Like it, it, it solves so many problems and it looks, it's a beautiful, you know, beautifully printed part and it's functional at the same time. It's not like just for show. Um, stuff like that, like that totally makes sense to me. And I think that's the best use of 3D printing on a bike that I've seen is, is like components like those. What do you think about the term 3D printing? Because it kind of sounds weird. So now I hear people saying additive manufacturing, which sounds, I don't know, it sounds more correct to me than 3D. You're not really printing it. It's kind of well, just like 
I don't know. It's, uh, added, the, the additive manufacturing versus subtractive manufacturing. That's just the classification of how something is created, right? So I, I don't know. I'm asking. <laughs> yeah, like like <laughs> typically subtractive manufacturing, you start with like a big block, like oh, anything so like, that's like, machined, right? right you're taking machine, away sure. material. Sure. Like you're sculpting, right? Right. Um, additive manufacturing, you start with nothing and you build it up. You add material to it. As so is that is that just semantics as far as 3D printing and additive manufacturing? Right, so or? 3D printing is one type of additive manufacturing. Oh, okay. Got like, it like cnc machining is one type of you know subtractive manufacturing got it got it yeah this is why you're on the show so there you go <laughs> <laughs> <That's> tuesday <clears throat> so um yeah i i have a follow-up question uh, about your your insta um, action cam review and um i'm a gopro guy not saying that it's got better quality part of the reason that i uh, enjoy GoPro is basically the subscription service being mm. able to upload to the cloud. Um, that's huge for me because like, you know, I need a huge, you know, my, my library, it's, you know, I'm putting in terabytes every year. So <laughs> to be able to go back and find it, um, it's, you know, the $50 a month is a big thing, but mm -hmm. I, I do recognize that it has fallen behind the others. Um, but, at the same time, like this is the year where go, you know, every three years they upgrade their processor. So, you know, I've been trying to look ahead to typically it's like around September that they release it. Maybe they'll go with the number 13 this time. We'll see if they'll stick with that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I'm just wondering, like, do you think it'll be that much better than the others when it comes out or, um, or more like what will it what, what would be in your wish list because when they went to the 10 the one thing that I wanted the most was uh, 120 frames per second on four mm. and so they brought that um, and the five the 5.3 is is okay too um, but I'm just wondering uh, I should have cut it off before I started talking more I, but, I got your question yeah <laughs> like the, I don't know if GoPro's fallen behind. I think other cameras have gotten really good. Mm -hmm. So you know all the videos that are, you know, truthfully, all the DJI Action Four videos, like ninety percent of them are paid, sponsored videos. Um, you know, GoPro Killer, like is GoPro finally done? Like all these kind of alarmist titles, those are paid videos. Um, and and. Companies like Insta360, a lot of their videos are paid as well. Um, I, I think the only way to, to to really know is to actually try try them yourself. Um, for me, like if I'm looking at the spec sheet, the one re one like factual uh, place where GoPro is quote falling behind is in the uh, image sensor size, I guess. Right. So the new Action Four and the the Insta360 Ace Pro both have a much larger sensor now. Um, which means that low light performance is way better and, and a few other things. I'm not really a, a camera tech guy, but you know, GoPro 12, like probably the next thing they'll do is match the sensor size. And then, you know, it's, it's always an arms race, you know, between the camera companies. So, um, for, for me, as far as cameras go, like I kind of zoom out and I, I think of all the cameras in, in terms of two camps, you've got your traditional action cameras like GoPro uh, Hero, Ace Pro, and the uh, Action 4. And then you've got 360 cameras, which to me are like a completely different tool. Uh, they serve a different purpose and I like to have both. So for me, like, like honestly, like the Action 4 is really good right now, but so is GoPro 12. And so is the Ace Pro. They're all really good action cameras. So you know, I can nitpick. I've got. I have to you actually do a couple of videos <laughs> coming up on on action cameras. But honestly, I can take either one of. I can take any one of those three action cameras and be happy with it personally. Um, but for me, I won't leave the house without the Insta three hundred and sixty um, X three. That's probably my most. Um, that's probably the camera that I reach for most lately. 
And for me, it's a it's a quality versus convenience. That's really all it comes down to. Because your action cameras, the quality is going to be way better, right? For sure. Um, just better better image quality out of a, a Hero Twelve or a, an Action Four. The three hundred and sixty camera is a whole different like beast because you just turn it on, put it anywhere, and then you could you could point the camera after you get home, right? Because you just stick the camera out there. It's recording everything around it. And so when you get home, you're like, oh, I want a shot of the scenery. Let me flip it around. Oh, actually, you know, I want a shot of me because I'm talking right now. I'm going to flip it around. But you can do the, all that once you get home. Um, the image quality is not as good. I was just going to say to you. Yeah. Because I watched your video. I forgot. You were at some lake and you hadn't been there in 20 years or something. You were riding with a buddy. Yeah. And you had a GoPro in your chest for sure. And you had the Insta and you were cutting back and forth from those shots. And the mm. image quality was decidedly better on the GoPro. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was like, wow, you can really tell when he's on the Insta. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I don't know how old that video is. It's like it's gotten better since then. But Well, so that was that video was a long time ago. And that was the Insta360 X2. So it was a, pre mm -hmm. it was a previous model. And I didn't know – I wasn't um, – as efficient as in the export process. So, mm -hmm. so I think that was just like an H265, you know, codec or whatever. So now with the X3, which has a better sensor, um, and now I, I think I sort of know how to process it a little better. I'll, I'll export in ProRes, uh, which is a, I don't, someone tell me, I don't know exactly what that means, but it's like better, it preserves more of the image quality. Um, YouTube does weird stuff when you upload a video so it might look one way in, in your premiere pro or or whatever final cut once you upload it, it 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 does some weird compression things if you're not at super high resolution too so oh. okay um, yeah for me it's a trade-off you know uh I, I like i like the i like the shots where it's like third person view like you know while you're writing it's like someone's out in front of you yeah um, those are good for like if you want to do talking head while you're writing um, but of course, yeah, you're going to lose a little quality image quality. Yeah. I'm not a, we're not, I'm, we're not professionals here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've seen better Insta 360 videos. So I figured it was kind of old. It was probably like a first gen camera was my yeah. guess. Right. Yeah. What do you take Zach? Are, I mean, you, I, like when I rode with you at the Maverick burgers ride, was that the, where we met or was it the. It was one of those. Yeah, yeah. I came out to to the burger ride. And, yeah. Um, I mean, you got like sixty cameras, like all over your bike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. In, that, in that ride, I wasn't like totally planning on shooting a video, but like sometimes you just happen to. I'm like, well, I've, I've got the mounts and everything. I might as well just turn right. it on. And right. uh, yeah, I mean, like, I think like my my I mean my biggest pet peeve is the the low lighting. But I, like mm. nobody, uh, you know, you know, for cameras these size, nobody's found a way around it completely yet, and it's gotten better. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think I had the original GoPro, so it's interesting even looking at the lower resolution. But you know, at the time, it looked fantastic. Yeah. And right. so I don't know if <laughs> in another couple of years people are going to look back and be like, "Ah, oh, this is terrible. You only shot in 4K." <laughs> 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 i don't know man like i can't even see, i don't feel like i can't even see in 4k <laughs> i know yeah wow. i i could see maybe you know the 60 frames a second might be a cool thing and like you know i see it on you know on programs it's kind of like this is kind of i gotta get used to this yeah um and i it probably was the same thing like when talkies came out you know like you're not used to hearing people's voices. Uh, you want to get back to reading. So, uh, yeah, I, I I don't know if if that'll take off. I mean, look, we've been how many years of 3D TV supposed to be the thing? Oh and, yeah, and um, never. That was took a flop. Off. Never took off. And you know, it was funny. I was telling you earlier that I was working at a VR lab, and every once in a while we were able to. Um, over at Bolter Hall, there I don't know if you there was a, a, a one sixty degree screen there that had three projectors that we could put our computer model on, 
And, you know, what was interesting with VR, now this was at the time, like people didn't understand VR technology. They're like, I'm really controlling this? This is really like what's happening there? And so, I mean, that's kind of like why I was going to grad school is to try and figure out like why people how do people absorb trends and information in front of them? And um, yeah, I, you know, like I, I, I'm trying to figure out where we can go with like production. I mean, better drones would probably be something, um, especially, co you know, for race coverage. Um, but, you know, outside of that, like how we view things, I, I think, you know, we, we've seen very creative things on Instagram, you know, people that create a lot of things. But, you know, I, I keep coming back to people that, you know, have a longer shelf life, you know, that are able to talk genuinely about products, places, people, um, because you can always make flashy videos. But after a while, that kind of, you know, wanes a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other thing too is audio. Like, do you use like a an, a lav mic linked up to your cameras, or do, do you use onboard mics? I just, I just, I mean, because I don't record a lot of audio. Oh, but, that's right. You voice over most of your videos, right? Yeah, I mean, I all do, the video. Yeah, oh, I mean, yeah. I I do have those road mics, and every once in a while I'll bring them along. And you know, Vic and I, we've done tests with with those mics before and riding, but. Yeah. You know, to me, it's just, it's another thing to think about while I'm yeah. on the ride. It is, yeah. 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 So, because, I mean, I'm sure we've all done this where we've all, like, hit the record button and forget to turn it off. And then you, you think you're turning the record on, but you're actually turning <laughs> it off. So. Are you talking about the time I did that? And we, we all do it. Thing? We all do it. Oh, my God. It was a nightmare. <laughs> So, um, you know, I'm just like, it's look, you know, we used to just carry a, a wallet and keys and now we have to remember to put a cell phone in our pocket too. So, you know, that's, that's why I've like stayed away from, you know, what I might just do is just basically record everything and then go back. But I'm like, that's just, my videos take too long to make already. <laughs> so yeah. it's over forever. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, no, I, I don't. I mean, all right. So back to the, the what, what was the question? <laughs> the question was, where's GoPro going? I, I would, I would predict that the next iteration of GoPro will bring that larger sensor. That's probably the main upgrade that that we'll see. Um, one of the things that DJI is doing is they're incorporating their uh, their mic, the DJI Mic Two. So you can connect the if you have the mic and you have the action four, they talk to each other natively. You don't need like a, a dongle to like pair or whatever to the camera. Turn on the mic, turn on the camera, they're talking to each other. So it's actually pretty convenient. Um GoPro might do something like that, I would I would guess. But they don't they don't actually have an external mic set up, do they? A product? I'm not sure if they do. You know, they you know, they've had like these mods to use. Yeah, the mod. Never, they're never that elegant. I mm. had one for the eight and uh, it helped a little, but not too much. But, you know, the, the problem in, I, I kind of find one of the issue with, with the GoPros is like those batteries want to get loose while mm. it's in there. And sometimes when you like take the door off and you add the mod on, it makes it that much more difficult to I use. See. So, um, yeah, like for me, it's just more like consistency. Mm. Um, and that's kind of like, you know, I bought an 11 and it's, you can't, it doesn't have the screen in front, but I love the reliability of it. Yeah. And it seems to, the battery does seem to go, um, last pretty, pretty, pretty long. Mm. So, uh, I, I you know, I'd like to see a little bit less proprietary stuff. I mean, we all do as cyclists, right? It would be nice if, like, they'll never do it, but if GoPro, you know, had it to where you can pair a DJI camera to it just via Bluetooth, that'd be awesome, right? And I, I don't, I honestly don't see that it would be 
uh, a bad move on anyone's part because if GoPro doesn't have their own mic, but they make it compatible with a DJI mic, then it it potentially serves both companies, you know, beneficially. Um, less proprietary stuff, yeah, in in general, especially in the bike space. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> yeah, Canyon <laughs> specialized. Sure. Oh my God. Um, you guys are going to Sea Otter next week, yeah? Are yes. you? Um, yes. I saw that. Are you going to be leading some rides out there, or we have a meeting on Friday? I don't think we are. Um, you know, there's a lot going on in Sea Otter that I don't know so if we much. need to, to add to it. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I, I, have you been there like multiple times in the past? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This this will be my third. Are you going to be there? I'm not. I was there last year, and um, it's just tough to go every year. I think my plan is to try and go every other. Um, oh. Every other year, maybe. So I won't be there this year, but it'll be fun. Do you have like an itinerary? What your plan is? Yeah, yeah. Well, we're gonna do we're gonna do a the gravel race. Okay. And Zach's doing a family ride with his daughter. Oh, nice. And then you know we'll probably we'll definitely hit the expo several times. We're camping. Oh, cool. Um, we may have some ambassador duties to do. <laughs> right, right. Um, but yeah, it's it's fun. I mean, I, I look forward to it every year. Yeah. yeah. What are your main stuff? Who do you go see at the expo? What are you What are you hoping to see, and from who? Which brands? Uh, oh, well, well, you know, last year for me it was number twenty two, the titanium brand out of New York. Oh, okay. And luckily, uh, it was funny. Zach was talking to somebody right next to the booth, and I, I stepped away. I literally got turned around and lost. And I, I, I lost where the booth was. And our friend Troy had a test bike from them, and he was wheeling it in as we were leaving. And I got to see it. Oh, cool! <laughs> and it was like, oh, there is the bike. I, I couldn't find them anymore. But anyway, right. number twenty. I like the boutique builders. I mean, I like everything. Yeah. Um, I'm also really happy to see the new SRAM Red because I've been waiting for that. I'm, I hope that's going to be there. I think it will. Is they, they're long, long due for an update. Yeah. But but nothing in general because everything's cool. And hopefully, you know, it'll be some surprises. But like Zach said, it probably won't be. It's kind of a, <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. <clears throat> I think the thing is, and I was probably going to do like a little short video later this week, but I, you know, it's one of those things like, you know, they're there not just for no reason. You know, they do have stories to tell or technology to, to discuss. Um, and I think that that's part of the thing is like, and I have this problem with going to any type of convention is like you see something and you just want to see everything and talk. Yeah. And that's like the wrong way to approach it. Yeah. Because you miss them. Yeah, and really, like, the way it's, like, and sometimes, like, it's the, the happy accidents where you happen just to be around something, and you're, like, hey, you just start talking to the people, and you're, like, oh, that's that's really interesting. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the funny thing, and maybe I'll cut this part out later, but I was walking through some, like, and somebody in this booth was, like, you know, hey, you're the GBC guy. I've seen your video. So I was, like, yeah, okay, yeah, hi, and like that and i'm like what is this and it's like an underwear company and <laughs> uh <laughs> what <laughs> but it ha basically like this underwear company has this i guess this patented thing to um uh hold certain male parts in a certain way oh. uh, um and so you know pouch the, yeah some, some type of pouch or yeah <laughs> Well, okay, you're gonna hate it because I think, like they said, they called it the secret sauce. So, oh! uh, do not, they didn't sponsor you on this. Yeah, the secret, <laughs> yeah, the secret bike sauce. Oh no, I see a collab coming up. <laughs> but, yeah. um, but you know, they, they gave me some, oh, some damn. boxers, which or, or some briefs, which my wife really loves. Um, she does. Oh, if, cool. Yes, bonus bike pouch, <laughs> and um. And, but they also gave me some, you know, some bibs, you know, some some un undergarment bibs. Oh, cool! And uh, I've I've actually worn worn the bibs, and it's it's been, it's been really nice. So like, 
I, I do encourage like, you know, obviously, you know, the, the bigger brands are going to be all over in, in a lot of things, but I, yeah. I think like the smaller, you know, the smaller companies like don't have money to throw around. They're there because like, they think they have something, a story to tell. Mm-hmm. So I think like that's a, a huge part too. Yeah. I, I would like to see, well, not, not that I would like to see, I, I might, a I, couple predictions. Um, I don't know about you. I, I kind of feel like as far as gravel goes, I, maybe it's early to tell, but I, I think maybe we're at like peak gravel, if that's a thing. Um, I, the big companies are out of ideas, in my opinion. It's going to um, be more suspension and, and more yeah. compliance things. Yeah. Watch. Yeah, that's, yeah. They're yeah. Gonna, right. So it's a lot yeah. of suspension, putting forks on the gravel bikes. Yeah. Designing compliant carbon handlebars. Yeah, I I would suspect that we might start seeing uh, a trend away from carbon and going back to well-designed metal bikes. Um, I, I think you're right. I think that's already ha- it's definitely happening in the boutique brands for sure in the boutique. Yes. Brand. Yeah. Yes. So I mean, like people are have been aware for 30 years that you can build a very comfortable steel bike. Absolutely. But it, you know. 30 years ago, maybe they, they just weren't as, as nice or as light or as, you know, as modern as they could be today. Well, so. 30 years ago, they were still, they were just cyclocross bikes, which is, That's right. you know, there was no gravel. The grandfather of gravel bikes. So. <laughs> That's right. This yeah. is nothing new. Exactly. So I would, I would say you, you walk around all the boutique brands, I would probably wager that you see more metal bikes than, than carbon. Um, I think you're right. External yeah. cabling. Like I, I bet we'll start seeing more of that because internal cabling, internal, uh, internally routed cables look nice, but they're such a pain. And I think people are maybe finally catching on to that. Um, you know, you I could, hear that a lot. I don't find them to be such a pain. No, but not really. It's, 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 it takes a little more time, but it's not such a pain. I mean, if you're a rookie mechanic, then yeah, it's a nightmare. Yeah. But if you're, yeah. you know, if you're a reasonably skilled mechanic, it's, it's not such a pain. I've done it on a couple of bikes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it just looks cool. But the flip side is on a nice steel bike, it's not necessary. It looks just clean. And it's easy to do. Like, I, I totally agree with you. Yeah. 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 I, I think that part of it, and I think this will definitely make the, the bike industry grow, is we have such a focus on these high-speed bikes you know what's happening at Unbound Belgian Waffle, yeah, yeah. riding what? Um, but like, you know, maybe people are going to start showing up to these events and like, I'm really not like these people. Um, you know, <laughs> I I really just just want to ride my bike. And well, I'll throw this up too because this kind of ties into where I'm going with this. You know, I was getting ruts and not wanting ever to ride. You know. Um, because, Hmm. you know, it's one of those things like, you know, for me, you know, I'm, I'd throw a big smoke screen. I don't ride outside as much as probably people think. Um, I'm a Zwift fleet because it's about like as much time as I have. And if I do go outside, there has to be like some type of purpose and, uh, or like some, some like really nice ride and experience. Um, which which is hard to do, but like I think that um, you know if this industry can kind of like drive people towards you know hey you know this is about seeing things not about like how fast you ride through them um, will will be a, a big component if they can get that that part of the imagination in and I think that's kind of like where they were trying to go with us on this ambassador program for Sea Otter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, went to regular people and me um for <laughs> um to, to to you know bring bring a different face to it but i think that that's that's part of it because we just keep seeing the speed side yeah. and I, I was more intimidated by like the technology than the the clothing um getting mm-hmm. into into biking and i think like if you can strip that barrier down and make it more kind of like an experience yeah well that's why i think rides like yours like send it your send it rides i think you invite i mean you got strong riders but you don't 
cherry pick fast riders. You ever anyone can show up, right? Yeah, I mean it's uh, you know like uh, it, it's hard because like you try and get the ride to go fast enough. You know, it's an an, an organized ride, so people leave all the time too, which yeah. is fine. Um, but you know, I just like having about 30 people is about the right number. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, it, it's hard because, you know, people are different abilities and yeah. you know, try and keep people together and wait and just have like a lot of quick, you know, quick breaks. So people don't fall. It's not spread out too far. Yeah. Um, but this is cycling. This happens everywhere. Um, uh, right. You know, we're not machines out there. So I, mean, I, I would predict that there are more of, of us, meaning, you know, non-competitive kind of cycle mostly for, you know, exercise and just, you know, being out in nature. There's probably more of us than we think, but we're just, there's not like a, a central representative for those, for, for those of us who aren't, who don't care about racing. So, um, the more channels like pathless pedaled and and um to a lesser extent maybe like the the tinkery channels like spin dash channel like these channels are the ones where like oh yeah biking doesn't have to be about racing it's just about having fun and exploring and adventuring i think those are doing more good for the industry than the industry probably cares to admit yeah 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 and it's funny because like you know, a couple of weeks ago, I was sick, but um, I went up to Everyone Loves Raymond, which is a, a ride in the foothills of Sierra put on by Fresno Cycling. <clears throat> and, you know, it's it's a it's a bike club. So, you know, it's not a lot of bells and whistles, although they actually give us a, a, lot, a lot of goods to, to this ride. Um, but, like, there's a lot of these smaller events that, you know, there's no timing, which is great. Yeah. And you see like a bunch of riders that kind of reflect that which is great because it's just it's a much wider web and i think that like we need to focus more on doing that it's just down here the the biggest problem in southern california is like you have a lot of hills to climb yeah so it's super intimidating for somebody to get out there and having to climb and then having to descend so um I think we really touched the pink. I'm sorry, my phone is about to die, so I plugged it in. And I had to take the earphones out because soon the Apple took out the plug, so you can't uh -huh. charge and listen at the same time. So thanks, Apple. You, okay, I'm sorry. We could we could talk more racing content if that'll keep you in. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm good. My okay. phone is like five percent. Okay. So now it's charging. It, so I, 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 I didn't I want will... to just black out. <laughs> <laughs> I I would guess Zach, you ride ten thousand miles a year. If I had to, if I had to put a number on it based on like your internet presence, but, but, but maybe it's not that. It, it's, it's not about miles for Zach. It's all about elevation gain. So uh, if he doesn't do a million plus feet, <laughs> then it's a bad year. See? <laughs> see? Yeah. yeah. We're very different. I think. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just very, I'm very numbers oriented. So, mm -hmm. but even though like, you know, I don't target races. It's just for, it's just kind of more for me. Like I need to ride with a purpose. I need to run with a purpose. Otherwise, you know, it's, it's hard to really quantify like the experience, I guess for me, which is terrible. I got okay, you. Here's the thing though. Racing doesn't have to be all serious and like, you know, th definitely there's people that are, you know, they train and train and train and they race and they do crit races or whatever racing discipline they do they're all about it but there's other series like we do the the uh, cyclocross at the park that's not a serious thing and right. we go and race and we have fun and i yeah. do a race series um in running springs near big bear um rim nordic xc and there's fast people don't get me wrong there's guys that are serious but when i go i, I have such fun it's such a cool vibe low-key atmosphere so it's not like high pressure world tour racing yeah but it's cool if you get on the podium. I've got a bunch of little medals from getting on the podium. It, it's fun. So you, you can race without it being like super high pressure and super crazy because I'm yeah. not all about it. I'm too old for that. I just want to go have fun like you guys are saying. But racing adds a little a little more element to it. You get the butterflies. Sure. and Yeah, yeah. yeah it's kind of cool. But it doesn't have to be super high stress because I, I wouldn't do that. What's the point of that? I'll just yeah. 
I'll just ride in the neighborhood. Right, right. You uh, know. Okay, we're I know we're almost at an hour. We'll try and wrap it up soon. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I know we got a couple of questions here, and I think I know your answer to this. Let's oh, see. hey, Melissa. I know Melissa from the the PLP ones. Uh, bigger tires or gravel suspension fork? Uh, got to go with bigger tires. Hundred percent. My answer exactly. <laughs> yeah. Bigger tires. Yeah. Yeah, it's because it's um people think I think I think people are coming around but the the notion of wider tires being slower I think holds a lot of people back from going wider tires yep um and they're they're not slower the wider okay. tires are faster um sci science it's science <laughs> <laughs> science right so uh, uh, it, it's more about the casing than the width of the tire right you put like a what you want is the lowest hysteresis casing available, which typically means thinner and springier, right? Um, hysteresis is just like a fancy term for like it does something different on the way back than on the way out. So if you squish a tire and it takes a long time to return, like a memory foam pillow, that's high hysteresis. That'd be terrible as a tire. Um, yeah, it would. <laughs> a spring with no damping in it is like zero hysteresis. It follows the same exact path on the way in and on the way out, that's where you're going to minimize your, susp uh, your your suspension losses in the tire. So the fact that it's bigger, it's actually absorbing a lot of energy that would have gone into your tissue and slowed you down and fatigued you, right? So got to go wider tires, lower pressures. <laughs> Science. Science. Yeah. The best analogy I have for that is um, I don't know if you guys ever been, were into skateboarding, like, you know, freestyle skateboarding, but you get those tiny wheels that are super hard and you try and skate over like a really rough driveway or something. You just come to like a halt trying to roll over that, right? And then you put like, even if it's the same diameter tire, like a soft compound tire, you just kind of rumble over it all and you just like make it all the way through. That's because with the really hard tire, it's not in the, the skateboard is not slow. The thing that's slow is that all those vibrations are transmitting into your body tissue, heating up your tissues. And that's where all that energy is going. So, Oh wow. Yeah. So that's why the wider tires, they absorb that before it gets to your tissue to fatigue your, what, what were skateboard wheels made of before they were urethane? Oh, the original skate wheels. I well, thought not the, were like not the metal ones, but after metal, oh. there was something. Oh, I don't know. I know that the originals were metal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So maybe it went metal urethane. I, I don't know, but I just remember urethane. I was never a big skateboarder, but I do remember when urethane wheels came out. It changed the game. Like it was like light years better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One time for fun, I took the, my um, freestyle skateboard wheels off and I put rollerblade wheels on. Oh wow! And that was my favorite skateboard ever. I, you could push once and coast for like a block. It was awesome. <laughs> Well, this is interesting. A couple of people put this in, so I don't know if it's true or not. Clay. Clay, Clay I, I was going to say that, but I, I thought that was a myth. Mm. I was going to say Clay, but I thought that was wrong. Huh. Mm. Okay. Well, we're probably gonna... not Probably not all that compliant either, to be honest. No, no, because <laughs> when they went from Clay to urethane, the urethane was a million times better. Yeah. Smoother, faster, everything. Looked right. cooler. Everything about it was better. Right, right. Well, well, maybe next week we should have the skateboard sauce on. We'll have <laughs> there you go. Like, yeah, would you would you take a freestyle skateboard with the really hard wheels and put a put a shock between the trucks and the deck? No one would ever do that, right? That's, that's a great analogy. Doesn't make any sense. So that's that's like putting a shock on the front of a gravel bike with really hard tires, right? Oh, it, it in my that that's probably not science. That's speculation, but. That's what I, that's how I think about it, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Sounds reasonable to me. Yeah. Oh, well, Mom, we're going to wrap it up. I mean, we, uh, you said chit chat, and this was a lot of fun chit chatting. Yes. And, um, well, I would love to have you on again because, um, who doesn't love talking about bikes like this? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, I'll do it. Sign me up. <laughs> um, cool. Cool. Well, thanks for coming on. Um, you know, we'll give you some rundown of what we saw at, at Sea Otter and, um, you know, we'll, we'll catch up soon.
Yeah, I'll see you at Maverick at some point again soon. Yes, yes. I'm looking forward to uh, – keep talking, people are saying. <laughs> Come on, we'll have kids. <laughs> Got to leave them wanting more. Can't yeah. Let it dry up all the way. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe we'll have like a paid show. People will have to pay extra. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> now then there's then there's pressure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now you're pushing. Yeah. How did you really come with the bike sauce? <laughs> <laughs> the secrets. You have to pay for the secrets. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks so much. All right. All right. Thanks, guys.